Hi everyone, welcome to SDPCB's FPGA development series sponsored by Alinks.com. If you haven't already watched our first video about how to write a simple LED blinking code for Alinx Zinc 7000 development kit, you can click over this i button and go and watch that video. Now let's come back to this video. This video I've divided into two sections. In the first section, we'll talk about how to simulate your Verilog code before flashing it into actual development kit. And this is highly recommended. So once we'll be writing complex code, it's good to simulate those first before flashing it into actual FPGA development kit. In the second section of this video, we'll talk about how to use integrated logic analyzer, which is an IP code. And that help us to debug the code. So once we have flashed the code, sometimes it doesn't work as expected. So what we have to do, we have to debug that. And that we can do with the help of Vivado's integrated logic analyzer IP code. So this video is going to be very interesting. And we are going to learn simulation as well as debugging of our very log code on actual hardware. So let's get started. In the first step of this video, we are going to set the simulation configuration on Vivado. To do that, first we'll open the previously created project. So let's open Xilinx Vivado from the start menu. Click over open project. And you can simply download that using the link given in the description. In my case, I'll go to desktop. Go to Alinx FPGA development folder. Go to first project and, and there you'll find this first project.xpr file. We'll just select that and click over open. This is the same LED blinking project which we have created in previous tutorial. Now once the project have been successfully opened, we'll simply go to simulation from project manager. Right click there, go to simulation settings. And here we are going to increase the simulation time. So make sure you have selected simulation from project setting. And here you have to select simulation tab. Currently it is set for 1000 nanoseconds or 1 millisecond. We are going to make it 50 millisecond. So we'll simply make it 50,000 nanoseconds or 50 milliseconds. Both will work. Click lower apply and OK button. So that's it. We have set the simulation configuration. Step number two is we are going to add the simulation source in our project file. To do that, we'll simply click over this add sources from project manager and make sure from here you have to select add or create simulation sources because we already have the design sources which we have written in the previous tutorial. So select that and click on next button. Now here we are going to create the simulation source file. To do that, we'll click over this create file and we are going to name it LED test because we are going to simulate our LED blinking project and click on OK button. So as you can see, the file have been created. Next, we'll click over this finish button. Now here it is asking, are we going to add any IO ports in this source file? And we'll simply click over OK, because we are not going to add any IO ports. And here we go. So here we have the simulation file successfully created, which is LED test. Now to link these two, the simulation file to the design source file, we have to instantiate the design source file variable in the simulation code and that we will see further in this video. Next we have step 3. In step 3 we are going to write our very log test bench for this project. To do that we will simply double click on this LED test source file which we have created and here we can clearly see it start with time scale directive of 1 nanoseconds time scale and 1 picoseconds of precision and next we have this LED test empty module. Now here as we already did in our project source file, we are going to define input and outputs, which will be simply system clock, reset, and all the LEDs, which are four in our case. So if we'll double click on LED blink. So here I just want to quickly discuss what was our very lock code. So you can simply recall from that. So as you can see here, we have defined two inputs, which was system clock and reset. And reset in our case is active low. And then we have four outputs, which are defined in the form of register from LED 0 to LED 3. Similarly, we are going to define these inputs and outputs in case of our test bench. So first, I'm just going to write the Verilog code 
by explaining each line to you and later I'll explain how this simulation process works in the form of block diagram. So let's start with defining input and outputs. I'm going to do that quickly. Here we go. Now after defining input and outputs, we are going to instantiate the test bench. Make sure the name of this instantiation function should be same as your Verilog code. So in our case, it is LED blink. So it should start with LED blink space unit under test. Then we'll open the function and inside this will instantiate all the input and outputs. Now how we can do that? We can simply use this syntax as you can see on your screen. So it starts with dot, then the name of the variable and then what variable we are passing from this very log test bench. All right. So this system clock should be present in the LED blink project. All right. And here we are writing the variable which are passing from the test bench. I'll explain that in our block diagram as well. So for now, let's close this and that's it. This is our instantiation for this test bench. Next, we are going to initialize all the variables. To do that, we simply use initial begin module. So let's type it initial, then begin this initial. And here we are going to initialize sys clock, which should start from zero. Then we have this reset underscore n zero. So initially board will be in reset state because this is active low. And when we'll initialize it with zero, the board will go into reset state. Then we'll wait for let's say thousand nanoseconds. Now to do that, we'll simply type has thousand and then board will come out from reset state and which can be done by assigning it to one and we'll end this initialization. Here we go. Now after instantiation and initialization, we are going to define the sys clock. So sys clock, if you remember from previous tutorial, it is 50 megahertz clock. And if we'll convert it into time period, it will be 20 nanoseconds. And in 20 nanoseconds, the clock will be high for 10 nanoseconds and low for 10 nanoseconds. So this can be easily done by using always block. So we'll simply type always 10. So here it will block for 10 nanoseconds. Then we'll type our variable, which is sys clock and we'll complement it. So after every 10 nanoseconds, the clock will toggle. And here we go. Now the test bench is ready. Next, we are going to save this LED underscore test code. To do that, we'll simply click over this save button. And as soon as we'll do that, if we'll go to simulation. So as you can see, the LED blink have been already assigned as a unit under test under the test bench code. All right. So this is our actual code, which is LED underscore blink. And we are instantiating that code using LED underscore test as we can see on this instantiation function. All right. So we are passing the sys clock reset and LED from this code to our actual code. All right. And this is how simulation works. Now step four is running the simulation. To do that, we'll simply click on this run simulation button. And from here, you have to select run behavioral simulation. Once we'll select that, we'll start executing and analyzing the steps that we have created in our test bench. Here we go. So now we can clearly see some waveforms here and which are the initialization of whatever the initialization we have defined in our test bench for all the variables, inputs or outputs. So these are all the initial states. Next, we are going to run the simulation. To do that, we'll just simply click over this run button. And as you can see, it started. Here we have to wait for some time. And we can clearly see the clocks are toggling after each 10 nanoseconds. And let's run the simulation for quite some time as soon as the LEDs will start. So if you know the LEDs will toggle after 50 megahertz of cycle. All right. So after 50 megahertz of clock, the LED will toggle because that we have defined in our code. So if we'll go back to our very log code and as you can see, it's running all these, the controls are moving here. And here we can clearly see we have this 50 megahertz of counter. All right. So it will increment after it is getting in that always block, which is at every positive edge of system clock. All right. So after that increment, when it will hit this limit, then it will consider it as a one second and LED state will toggle. So the same thing will be happening here. And here we go. 
So as we can clearly see the LED states have been changed. Now I'm going to pause this simulation. Go back to our simulation file and I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Here we go. So this is our one second of time and after one second the LED states have been changed. All right. So that one second will achieve after 50 megahertz of clock cycle, which is here. All right. And after another one second or 50 megahertz of clock cycle, the LED state will go back to zero. All right. So this is how uh, we can simulate any of the code. And this is very helpful because when you will be writing any complex code, it is good and always preferred to simulate them first before flashing into your actual hardware. Next, let's move to the next section of this video, which is live debugging or integrated logic analyzer or ILA IP code. So simulation does not require the program to be flashed into your actual development kit because it is more ideal scenario where we simulate inputs and output and we always get as expected results as per our logic, right? But in real hardware, things can be happening in a different way. And that's why we use this logic analyzer for debugging. In the step one of this section, we are going to add integrated logic analyzer IP core. Now here, if you'll ask what is IP core? So IP core stands for intellectual property core, which is the functional block or logic or data which programs FPGA for certain applications. For example, here we are going to use this integrated logic analyzer. So it will make the FPGA part of the module. For example, here we are going to use this integrated logic analyzer IP core. So it will make the PL part of FPGA to a logic analyzer by which we can able to see the waveform of different digital signals. Now to add the ILA IP core, we have to simply go to project manager. So we'll just select that. And here you will find this IP catalog option. We'll simply click on that. And after clicking that, we can simply see uh, this IP catalog tab. And here we are going to type ILA. So let's search ILA here. And we can simply see this option, integrated logic analyzer. We'll double click on it. And this customized IP window will open. First, we are going to rename this. So currently it is ILA underscore zero. Let's let it be like that. If you want, you can rename it to something else. Then we can see couple of options. So we can add number of probes up to 1024. But in our case, we are just going to add two probes. So let's select two here. Sample data depth, it will be 1024. Let it be like that. Otherwise, the debugging will be more time taking. Then we'll go to probe ports tab. And here we have to add the probe width. So if you remember, we have two probes. So the first probe will be the counter, which is 32 bit in length. So we'll just simply select that and probe one will be the number of outputs, which will be LED in our case. So what we are going to do, we'll simply run the 32 bit counter. We'll observe it and we'll see the state of LEDs. So as we'll run this debugger, we should see some waveforms which should be the similar as the state of LEDs. So if LEDs are high, then all these four bits of the probe one should be high. All right. So it should be synced with actual hardware. So we are going to debug that or observe that. So let's select four here and click on OK. Make sure the number of jobs should be four and click over generate button. Now we can clearly see the ILA underscore zero have been added in the design source. In the step two of this section, we are going to instantiate the ILA IP core for our LED blink project. Now to do that, we have to copy the instantiation script from this IP source file. So we'll just go there and we'll find this ILA zero, go to instantiation template, double click on it. And if we we'll scroll down, we can simply see these instantiation template. All right. So instead of create, you can also create it from scratch because we already know all the variables and what, what are the parameters we need to pass. So for example, probe one in our case is LED and probe zero is timer counter. All right. And these will be as it is probe zero and probe one. So we'll simply copy it and we have to paste it on our actual code. So we'll go back to hierarchy and we'll go to this very log code, which we have written here. All right. Now at last we have to instantiate it. 
So we'll just, just go before this end module and we'll paste it. Now here you can clearly see, here you have to add the instance name. So in our case, it can be anything. So let's name it ILA or something else. But this should be same as the, the IP code which we have created for integrated logic analyzer. All right. So let it be by default. Clock in our case will be sysclock. So we have to pass sysclock in that from this code. Probe one or probe zero will be the counter, which is a 32 bit input wire. So let's make it timer counter. All right. And probe one will be LED. And that's it. We have instantiated the ILA IP core in our very log code. And then we are going to save this project. So we'll click on this save file. Next, we'll move to the step three of this section, which is generating the bitstream file because we have updated our very log code. So we have to again generate the bitstream file and program the hardware, which you can see on your screen. So to generate the bitstream file, we'll simply go to this generate bitstream file from this flow navigator. And we are going to run the synthesis as well because we have changed the very log code. Let's run it for four number of jobs and click on OK button. And here you can see the synthesis has been started. It will take some time. So as soon as the synthesis have been completed, we have this pop up window and we'll simply click over this open hardware manager and then select OK. So next we are going to program that development kit as you can see on your screen to do that we'll simply click over this auto connect button and that will connect vivado to our hardware here we go as you can see the status is not programmed as of now so we'll just right click here and go to program device so last time when we were programming this device in the previous tutorial there was this bitstream file but there was no debug pro files but here this time we have this debug pro file as well and we'll click over this program button so as soon as the program will be done, you can see the LED blinking will start on our development kit. And here we can see a very new window, which is the debug window from the ILA IP core. So I'm just going to extend this a bit. So currently this debug window has two probes. One is timer counter of 32 bit and another one is LED OBUF, which is for four bit, which has all the four LED states. Next, we are going to run the debugging. To do that, we'll simply click over this run debugging and here we go. Here we can see it runs for 1024 samples. And as of now, we can't see anything, but we have to run it several times and then we can clearly see the state of LEDs. We can also add trigger. So let's say I want to trigger as soon as the 50 megahertz cycle have been completed because after that, the LEDs will change their state. To do that, we'll simply click over this add trigger button. Now here I'm going to add trigger on timer counter. So we'll select that and click on OK. Now here operator should be equal to and from here we have to select unsigned decimal and the value will be 499999. All right. So this is because it is starting from zero. So it is running for 50 into 10 to the power 6 minus 1 up to that value all right and rest are all the same and then rerun the analysis so once we'll do that you can see it is sort of syncing with the current state of the led as you can see on your screen so these are continuously blinking and if we'll just keep running that sometimes we can see this trigger will happen from zero to one so here led states are changing from zero to one sometimes it is triggering at when it's going low so we have to keep running that so now we triggered the debugger when led states are going from high to low all right so for this application it is not that useful but the integrated logic analyzer is very useful when you will be writing complex very log codes so that's it for this video if you have any questions you can just write it down in the comment section and i'll reply to those asap